The world of tomorrow. Something we've all thought about, from flying cars to space travel, maybe even teleportation. You may be on the doom and gloom train about global warming. Then there's always the Orwellian Big Brother world, or where corporations run the show. But this video, I'll be looking at the current trends, future technologies, and most of all, city planning. We will be looking at the things that are contributing the most to environmental destruction, what kind of changes we can expect in healthcare, transportation, food production, and overall life in 50 years. Before we jump into the future, let's look at a couple key components of our current systems and why as we move forward, these changes will be inevitable. Other than global warming, pollution directly contributes to endless medical conditions that cost nations unmeasurable amounts of money each year. Fossil fuels are limited resources that no matter how many ways we find to mine, refine, and use more effectively, there is a finite amount, and once that runs out, that's it. The biggest contributor to environmental destruction and the most unsustainable practice, though, isn't machines and factories, but livestock. As population continues to rise, the need for better city designs will be essential. Urban areas already house 54% of the world's population, and if you look at current trends, that number will continue to rise while rural living has stagnated and will most likely stay near its current numbers. When you think about planning for the future of cities, there are so many examples that, although seemingly well designed for their times, have been developed in a way that limits their improvements as population and city centers boom. Traffic is just one of the interwind systems that come into play. Everything from transportation of travelers and goods to food, water, power, and waste. Right now, all around the world, systems are being tested and implemented that have huge improvements over our current systems, and they keep getting better. With this, systems will prove their effectiveness in specific situations to allow city planners to pick and choose from proven systems in implementing cities that are more independent, self-sustaining, more resistant to economic and environmental impact, and most importantly, designed for the future population growth. Before your eyes start glazing over, let's see what that would actually look like around the world. There is no one-size-fits-all solution, so let's see what some of these may look like. Let's start with a couple cities that already show promise with extremely high population density low crime and pollution. Tokyo suffered from the same problems as many other densely populated cities in the world. With better planning, they were able to turn it all around before it was too late, adding huge amounts of infrastructure to public transportation, including monorails, subways, and high-speed rails, even a mega project bridge through their bay that took almost 30 years to design and construct taking a 50-minute commute and turning it into a 50-minute sprint. Without this infrastructure, it would be almost impossible to get around such a highly populated area. On top of that, most residents live within walking distance of their needs and do not need to worry about the urban sprawl that makes many cities unwalkable. Focusing on the future has allowed Japan to become a model for many other cities to follow. Now let's jump ahead 50 years and take a look around. The majority of people live in cities. Some cities grew so large they formed together with neighboring cities to create megacities, with populations reaching over 100 million people. Many jobs will become automated, leaving only technical jobs and jobs that require manual decision making that robots just can't handle. These jobs will be done from home or even in person halfway around the world for some. Self-driving cars will make up only a small percentage of transportation. Public transportation will take many forms as it does now, but the most exciting will be a maglev train in an evacuated tube running from the tip of South America to the furthest end of South Africa. This train system will connect all major population hubs and allow for transportation at incredible speeds. A commute from L.A. to New York could take just 45 minutes with a trip from L.A. to China being under two hours. Employees could work remotely during their commute. Large-scale agriculture will be largely replaced by local hydroponic farms serving their community. 
Only regions with suitable growing conditions will continue to provide their produce to the global market. Like many other systems, decentralization will allow for less waste and reliance on other systems. Similarly, more efficient home solar systems will provide more energy than is needed by the homes and small neighborhood grids will provide a surplus through a global energy grid system using the same superconductive tracks as the train system already mentioned. This means that all the extra energy now being created that is wasted will be used around the world. Renewable energy will be used when most efficient, similarly to the Stanford Scientist 50 state plan to transform U.S. to renewable energy. Areas with lots of wind will be used for more wind production, and places with more sun, obviously, more solar. However, in 50 years, energy needs will double, and we will get the majority of our energy from nuclear fusion. Not to be confused with fission that has been a source of huge concern since the atomic bomb first appeared. Fission is a much safer and cleaner process that will actually put to use the exhausted uranium already used in nuclear reactors today. But the nuclear waste will be the fuel of the future, providing nearly 4 million times more energy than a chemical reaction such as burning of coal, oil, or gas, and 4 times as much as nuclear fission reaction. This is huge, combined together with the efficiencies of a smart grid with the capacities of fission reactions, we will be able to create enough energy to continue the technological innovations we have seen over the last hundred years into the next. Along with the decentralization of food and power, we will also have decentralized manufacturing, where medium-sized facilities will be able to produce single-batch customized products cost-effectively enough that they will be cheaper than the added cost of global transportation and logistics. In many cases, the materials will even be harvested from recycled material in the community with even greater efficiency through integrated systems. In 50 years from now, the landscape of medicine will be completely different as well. Our bodies have millions of systems working together that can be affected by our environments, genetics, and even our own thoughts. There are just too many interconnected parts for our leading medical minds to consider them all, but with the help of big data, the medical industry will be transformed into an overall health system. Taking into account billions of data points, individuals will have access to usable data to form their life choices. This is why in 50 years from now, we don't need to worry about living in the Hunger Games. As disinformation is taking a hold of the choices of people today, Usable data will shape the mental landscape of tomorrow. Instead of hopping on the next trend diet, you will have access to the exact formula for your body and mind to get the results you want. The use of big data will also help demystify mental health and allow us to begin to treat psychological issues systematically and not as abstract concepts. On top of the better information, we will also be able to do things that are just beginning to be explored today like growing organs and even editing DNA to prevent issues from ever existing. Let's put that in perspective for a minute. You wake up at 7 a.m., take a walk down the street to grab breakfast with a friend and go shopping. You fresh pick produce from a hydroponic system less than a street from your house that is then put on an underground conveyor system straight to your kitchen. You remember you broke your sunglasses yesterday and you head next door to try on some sunglasses but you can't find the ones you like. You step in front of a smart mirror and search glasses from around the world that appear on your face in the mirror using AR. The glasses move with you in the mirror to let you see how they look on you. After purchasing from the smart mirror kiosk, a neighborhood manufacturing center puts your order in and starts 3D printing your glasses out of recycled plastic from your community. At the same moment, the lenses are ordered from a supplier halfway across the country and packed by a machine on a pallet within minutes and sent on the Hyperloop to your city. As you say goodbye to your friend after lunch and head to the gym, your glasses are already on a conveyor system from the Hyperloop to the manufacturing center and assembled with the frames that were printed. After the gym, you walk back home and prepare lunch with the produce freshly picked just hours earlier. Your glasses arrive at your home through the same conveyor system in your kitchen. 
You try them on and love them. You throw away your leftovers in the food waste bin in your kitchen that is connected with the same conveyor system that brings your food waste to be composted. It is almost 12 o'clock, time to head to work. You head down the street to your local train station where you clock in remotely and start working on your way to work in just two hours on the complete opposite side of the planet where you work doing the tasks you cannot complete remotely. Meet with coworkers and clients for four hours. You get off work and check your device for food recommendations. Your personal medical data sorts options providing you with exact nutritional suggestions combined with preferences to give you instant access to your well-being without having to dig around. After dining, you hop back on the train and you get home by 8 p.m. for your favorite show. Now, of course, life is much more complicated and not everyone will work on the other side of the earth, but you get the idea. Computers allow us to analyze information in a way that just couldn't be done without them. The more data we are able to collect and analyze, the more we will be able to integrate systems and solve problems. The invasiveness of this data collection will seem normal in 50 years, but to consider it today can be terrifying. Insurance companies changing your rates based off of your fast food purchases, politicians processing their speeches through predictive algorithms that you using our personal data to decide how each word is used to achieve their goals, people being segregated by their choices that affect other people, such as people who do not believe in vaccines being unable to attend schools, ride public transportations, or even being allowed to access public businesses. The flip side of this access to information will provide us the ability to navigate the ever complicated world with ease. Consumers will be able to see the social and environmental impact of their decisions in real time. When shopping online, you'll have instant access to the product's information, including how ethical it is. Imagine if you're buying two items that seem the same and have similar prices, but you can see that one is produced in a way that took critical land from endangered species to produce and requires hundreds of gallons of water and oil to be manufactured and transported to you. Of course, this can be done today, but you can spend hours researching ethical products and being misled by marketing tactics, have out of date information that maybe not only the latter companies started using sustainable practices, but they are also using proceeds to fix the problem they had contributed to in the past. This real time data will shape our society in a positive way likened to police body cams. Now, instead of taking two sides of a story, we can let the facts speak for themselves. In writing this script, I came across a lot of doom and gloom. I assume that some of you watching are already getting ready to argue that these changes are not inevitable. How can I be so sure that there won't be billions of gas cars clogging the expansive roadways of the future? Well, consider the alternative. We add more lanes to the highway, those lanes will continue to get congested. There are already people spending eight hours a day commuting to and from work, and there just are not enough hours in the day for that number to get much higher. We are reaching the limits that cannot be ignored. Maybe we can ignore global warming, but we can't ignore the mass amounts of funding wasted on subsidizing these commodities, then pay for the high cost of medical care caused by them, and the loss of GDP caused by the loss of workforce affected by them, it doesn't make sense. This just doesn't make sense. As you look for towards the future, don't be afraid to stop misinformation. Don't let people get away with those little untruths. I'm not saying go out there and start a fight, but the world will not be destroyed by those who do evil, but by those who watch them without doing anything. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please like and subscribe. This is Joe with Explore and Create. Until next time, have a great day.